So recording. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first 2019 Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group uh, meeting. Um, started, we started recording. Uh, please put your names on the attendee list if you haven't already. Um, and before we start the round of updates, I'm going to... Uh, there's a proposal for a new format that I would like to rehearse today. Um, so it's issue 58 on the Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group repo. Uh, there's a link on the crypt path. Um, and also a proposal for turning these starting to be crowded meetings to uh, weekly instead of bi-weekly uh, or fortnightly. Um, so from fortnightly to weekly. Uh, that's the proposal. Um, any comments on these two proposals? I agree. I just have that to say. <laughs> nice. So if you have anything to say, uh, we're going to try to rehearse this, this one today. Um, you can interrupt or um, chime in on the GitHub issue, please. Um, so that's, that's it for uh, meta stuff. Um, Oh, uh, also, is there someone that could uh, take notes for the second part of the meeting, for the discussion part? Any volunteers? I'm still writing my, my notes, so I can't really help right now. But yeah. it's, it's just for the second part. It's okay, just, I can, I can, do, I can yeah? take notes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so that if you don't, haven't read the, the proposal for the new format, it's the first half will be updates, quick updates. So. Uh, we have around, let's see, three, six, eight, eight people. Um, eight divided by the remaining time, uh, which is 25 minutes. So 25 minutes divided by eight will be around three minutes to each for their updates. And I ask, please keep your updates to the things that you are uh, dependent on. So you're stuck on something or you want uh, some help or you want some uh, input feedback um, please uh, focus on that and please keep it uh, limited to the three minutes so that we don't overrun into the second half of the of the meeting nice uh, so let's start in the order of the attendee list I haven't put my name here yet I'm the worst attendee um, all right uh, so starting with Jim, you want to give your update, Jim? Uh, sure. So um, I don't know if you, anybody saw it in the IRC channel, um, but over the, um, I took the advantage of the fact that we had sort of holiday time to do some more sort of unstructured sort of experimentation and trying to figure out how to make sort of small um, sort of sketch style, like small sketches uh, in terms of like really small, um, how small can we make uh, a peer base uh, program and uh, uh, I was playing around a bit with uh, this uh, X state library which is a, a um, library for um, coding up um, uh, finite state machines and I, I, I use this library I've used in past projects called Diffie which is written by Mathintosh which lets you make like really small react style con uh, terminal apps so I paired those together and uh, um, did some sort of multi-process <laughs> node stuff, and um, uh, if you check the IRC channel, I could even do a demo at this time, probably not, not in this meeting, um, of uh, running some pro sub processes all scripted together. Uh, you can you can perhaps put a um, a demo on the schedule if you want to demo that live. Okay, if there's if there's time, it only takes a minute. Um, it's it's very nice. It's very small, very small and self-contained, which is what I was going for. So I'm pretty um, happy with um, being able to um, simulate small um, scenarios in uh, very very few lines of code. Um, so so that was the main thing I I coded over the over the the break, and then um, I also sat, last week I sat in on a few um, other working groups. So I sat in on the browsers working group. I talked a bit about what I did in Tokyo. Uh, went met with Google there. I was doing some stuff with uh, this web package thing that Google's been working on for Google Chrome. So that was sort of neat. And then uh, I sat in on the community working group meeting meeting uh, and uh, just 
sort of spying on what they're doing. Um, so this week, I uh, there's there's some uh, peer pad maintenance I need to do, and um, we also we should also talk about like, are we going to rename peer base? Uh, there was an issue where the, the other guy who has the GitHub project peer base, um, he doesn't want to give up the name, so um, we we should that sort of impacts uh, what, what we're going to do for our landing pages and what are we going to call this thing. Um, and I think uh, I'm going to sort of sh shift into um, looking at the goals for next quarter um, as we want to figure out tutorials and things. So that's what my upcoming plan is. Awesome, Jim. Thank you. Um, that's very cool. Um, so I'm going to jump on to Satazor, Andre Cruz. Sorry, I, I was muted. <laughs> so anyway, um, going on to my concluded step uh, tasks. So I've uh, finished helping Pedro Santos uh, with the changes required to the build process of this classify so that we could publish uh, the extension on both Chrome and Firefox. That was finished. Unfortunately, uh, publishing on Firefox, uh, we, we can't really do it uh, right now because we need a privacy policy. So we reached out to the legal team, um, but uh, because they are sort of uh, overwhelmed, they, they haven't uh, uh, responded to us yet. So uh, we kind of block on, on Firefox. Um, we will try to ping them um, so, soon so that perhaps we can, we can get a, a privacy policy early on. Um, also, I've started contributing to IPFS log. So we had a meeting uh, with um, the IPFS log developers and also Pedro Teixeira was, was with me. So uh, the, the, the conversation was about Versilag and IPFS log and the simul similarities of the projects, projects and how could we uh, converge to a solution. And we decided to um, use IPFS log, but that required uh, some changes, improvements. Um, so we listed those improvements and created issues there and started to tackle, tackle those issues. Um, some of them were made by the, the developers of IPFS log, uh, the main developers, and some others were, were made by me. At the moment, I've, I've, I have a, a pull request that uh, is in review, which <coughs> brings on IPLD, IPLD support, IPFS log, and I will create another one um, soon about uh, the timeouts, result timeouts, um, or add timeouts to read and write operations on the PFS log. Because at the moment, if you're reading a CID and it's unable to resolve, it will be there forever. Um, so, so yeah, I've been contributing to, to a PFS log. And also, I've uh, created the initial draft of the identity breakdown. Um, I, I, I've written in Markdown, so I've put the, the content itself on a gist. But if you, if, you, if you guys want me to put on a Google document so that it's easier for us to collaborate, um, I can do so. It's very easy to, to actually transform it. Uh, so yeah, I'm waiting for feedback on, on that. I've just posted a, a comment on the PM IDM um, repo with the link to the, to, the, to the markdown. So after this, this meeting or when, whenever you have some time, please read it and, and give me feedback. So yeah, next steps, I will be still working on, on the breakdown, um, you know, based on, on your feedback, I will be iterating on the breakdown and improving, improving it. And also, we need to assign people to the high level points outlined in the document because I've made a, a, break, a complete breakdown of what I feel can be made um, autonomously and in parallel. So we can assign people to the different parts uh, and prove um, and improve the, or reduce the time to, to have a proof of concept. Um, so if anyone is interested in contributing, contributing to the project, please let me know, either in the, in the issue, or even you can um, manifest your interest in the GIST, or even the Google Documents, uh, Google Documents uh, if, if, I will, if I will put in the Google Document, I just you know, let, put a comment there saying I, I, I want to do that, and, and I will, will assign that to you. And I think that's it. 
Awesome, thank you. Next up is Dirk. Hi hey, everyone, happy new year. Um, so basically I've been working in general on trying to make discovery faster. And uh, as I've been working on that, I found a lot of stuff in the underlying P2P libraries in FloodSub and in Switch and uh, WebSocket Star, where I found that we often use polling <clears throat> instead of responding to events. And at each level of the stack as we go up, that polling kind of um, builds on itself and it ends up making things very slow. So I've basically been doing a lot of work on the underlying layers. <clears throat> and once I'm finished with that, then I'm probably gonna take a look at some of the connection management stuff within Peerbase and uh, just continue trying to sort of clean that up, make sure it's behaves correctly on startup and shutdown and so on. Nice, thank you. Um, Adin, you're up. Yeah, um, so I did a few like, um, you know, multi-writer IPNS related stuff. Uh, trying to get, I, I switched over from using protobufs to uh, go IPLDC bore so that um, we're sort of, it's a little easier to work with uh, when we start bringing in the rest of the graph structures. So I'm not replicating work. Um, and uh, put together some like content resolvers, like things that you can use on top of the graph, the graph layer. So that set CRDTs now work and um, sort of emulating single writer IPNS, but with conflicts, right? So it's uh, overwrite, but if you have two things that overwrite at the same time, then you get a conflict. Um, I'm starting to uh, list out the peer based concepts and uh, putting together a little bit about message queuing just so I can get thoughts out to people and get feedback from them and then I can get to that later. Uh, I'd also like to start working on uh, putting together something for synchronization over public channels um, like what you guys are doing with the rest of the peer-based stuff uh and i guess at least having some basic implementation of that in go is nice uh because then we can when we start building the stuff back taking some of the peer based stuff and moving it into go also that'll be there um so i'll probably start poking at it a little and, and run stuff by dirk to make sure i'm doing it the, the better way given that he's seen it being done the wrong way um and i'm going to be out uh for i'm going to be out uh between part of next week and the following week. So just like a heads up about that. And there's gonna be um, Justin Cormack from Docker who I met with uh, last month uh, and his works with Docker and, and the, no the noise framework uh, will probably be crashing next uh, our next meeting, uh, but I won't be there. So just letting you, letting you know. Nice, I read all about noise framework. So. That's cool. Nice. Thank you. Um, I guess I'm next. Um, so last three weeks, I yeah, I created for <laughs> spear based slash specs for a din. That's all. That's all I did, uh, did on on that regard. Uh, what well, not for a din, but for for everyone. But a din is taking the lead on 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 that specs as you as you saw. Um, so I did a dependency update storm on peer base and also did. Uh, something that was uh, approached last on last last meeting, uh, at least by Jim, which is delta batch batching the deltas for uh, quicker updates, and I managed to do that in a way that doesn't break that doesn't break the RGA CRDT, uh, um, and because delta batches are deltas are sometimes dependent on previous history. And and so uh, I with with that in place, I created some more tests, and I managed to bring uh, the concurrency level of the end-to-end uh, -end load tests to eight peers, uh, which I wasn't able to do before. So I'm very curious of trying out uh, PeerPad again, the dev branch of PeerPad again against this 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 current state of master um, of PeerBase. Uh, next uh, is uh, again oh uh, speed, try, try to speed up the tests for for peer base. 
uh, with pre-baked pure IDs because I guess we spend like 80% of the time creating pure IDs on, on the test. No, 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 I wouldn't say 80% of the time, a lot of time. And also I want to uh, dig into the Versidag or PFS log uh, realm and try and create a chat app and see what, what that, where that leads me and see how we could integrate some of this work on operation-based stuff or history, uh, causal history uh, into um, peer base. Um, there's something that I forgot here, which is peer base renaming. Uh, it will be like a poll of, of name alternatives for peer base. I already have a few. Uh, and then uh, I'm also going to dive a bit into, hopefully, a bit into the peer base connection management. Um, so trying to in tandem uh, with, with, with Dirk, uh, working on, on connection management, that, that's been, uh, I think there, there, there could be some improvements there. There's already been a lot of improvements there on connection management. And we, ha we have to be have better insights on, on which connections uh, we're holding because we have like uh, stats by IPFS or LP2P stats and we have stats, stats on, on peer base. We have to uh, make sure the stats on peer base are accurate um, and that the connection count is actually uh, uh, accurate. And, and that's, that's where I'm going to start uh, with. And so that we can speed up uh, collaborations with, where for a large number of, of peers. Um, and that's it for me. Um, Andre Souza, you're next. Okay, hi guys. So I've concluded the proposal for the draft um, regarding sitemap for IBM. We try to define the priorities regarding the user journeys and the, and the multiple pages. Uh, today I was helping Sarazor with the gist for uh, the IDM breakdown. And uh, currently in progress there are the regarding peer base, the collaboration lifecycle, UI and UX uh, guidelines, which were was prepared with uh, Marco and Sarazor as well. It was already uploaded to, to GitHub if you want to take a look. Uh, I started yesterday uh, the new concept or the, the, a new approach for the IDM as well. Um, and now I'm following Pedro, Pedro Santos with uh, the animations and implementation regarding the discussion file. Uh, I don't have anything blocked for now. I was on vacations between holidays and this week. So and the next steps will be the continuing with uh, the approaches and the concepts for, for that IDM regarding the user, user interface, of course. And yeah, that, that's almost it, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Andre, um, Marco, are you there? Yeah. Hello, hi guys. Um, I joined uh, mid meeting. Okay, let me just organize my windows. Uh, okay, so uh, I was on also on, on vacation um, so some of the days during the holidays. Uh, so concluded uh, the breakdown of, of the peer based plan, uh, mainly uh, strategic product management activities and outbound uh, activities, um, and which which translated into 2019 OKRs. Uh, now in progress. Um, well, we're starting the the photo. Uh, proto school chapter and that's that's um, uh, a discussion that's that's starting which might be um, handy for for the DDC um, where I'm, I'm uh, currently working uh, on the collaboration lifecycle draft uh, that's proving to be um, well a lot more work than than um, than we probably expected initially uh, the current status is on that link there on uh, on Cryptpad. Uh, you can have a look there are uh, the more we think about it, um, more questions come up, and uh, the, of course, the the, um, the the big win here will be uh, simplifying it because it's always easy to just add more stuff. Um, but the more detail we put into it, uh, the more complicated it be it becomes for both for the user, for the developer, and for the designer. So the devil is really on, in the details here. So we need to find a, a, a very simple solution. Um, I need to have a discussion with Sarazar now because there are certain aspects of the technology that I need to clarify with him just to make sure we're, we're um, in the right direction. After I have this, this discussion with, with Andre, uh, which I will have tomorrow, uh, I would like to schedule uh, a meeting um, with, with you, Pedro. 
um, I, and I want to make a note, this is important for, for the whole group. Some of the, the things that we are right now considering have implications on, on uh, both on the developer experience. So we're talking potentially changing APIs. We're uh, uh, potentially um, talking about how we approach the community. And this is following um, on, the, on the meeting that we had with Michael, Pedro, um, and, and, um, and Jim was there as well. Um, my, my personal view is that if we want this to stick, we, want, we need to be um, designing this for, for a more average developer uh, or even a more niche um, I, a noob developer. Um, if if it's simple enough for them, it should be simple for 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 the the more more advanced people. Um, so we need to have a, that discussion because I need to see if if, if there's uh, buy in, in in changing all these things because we're, some of these are are not compatible with what we have currently. Uh, then um, I'm starting the discussing the new iteration on, on IDM UX and UI. So I have had a, a couple of discussions with uh, with both Andres yesterday and, and today. Right now I don't have anything anything blocked. I moved my my task of, of putting the Scusify on Firefox to to Pedro. So he's taking care of that now. Uh, next, uh, I need to to finally do the the events that pitch. I, I I didn't have enough time uh, so far. I'm hoping that today I can get a good advance and and, and send that. Um, then I need to define a more specific plan plan for peer base, uh, specifically resources and, and milestones. This is something that I will be sharing with you, Pedro, first to to make sure we're we're on the same page. And finally, hopefully, I'm, I'm we should get approval for both the peer base plan and the event app uh, during the next couple of weeks, so that we can get going with the, the whole year. That's it. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, just on a quick note, uh, next week I'll be in Porto on LibitP uh, week. Um, and also in the, this gist for, for, the, uh, for the collaboration life cycle, I think Adin, at least Adin should, should take a look at, at, at that because there's, uh, the, 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 there are some proposals for changing the names of things or what is, so starting with something in collaboration or joining or all those verbs that we, we should uh, get a, a, a consensus on, uh, uh, I believe. Um, Sorry, can I just interrupt? I, I think I forgot to, to, to put my name on the ad attendees list. So I think we are missing my updates. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, Marco, Pedro Miguel, no, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. I think you yeah. are next. Yeah, okay. uh, go ahead. Okay, so a quick introdu introduction for those who don't know me. My name is also Pedro, but you can call me the other one or whatever you want. It's up to you. Uh, so uh, uh, my work is mostly related to UI animations of Discussify. And um, I think um, that, let me just look for my updates. Yeah, here. Okay. So, what is concluded is I finished. I finished some some animations. I can name them if you want. But um, reply and cancel have now a, a, a fade in just to to be smoother. And uh, what I will do next is also related uh, with UI animations. I can also uh, name name them, but I think it's not necessary. But the only thing I, I am blocked now. It's uh, what Andre also told about that is uh, Firefox publishing. So we are waiting for the legal team to, to have a, a response. And, and that's what I have blocked uh, for now. So I think that's it. Cool, thank you. Um, thank you for that. So we, we, we kind of, I think if there was no one else that wants to, to give their update, I think we finished right right before the, the schedule time, which is awesome. Thank you for the, the summarizing of all your efforts in these last three weeks. Um, so um, next in, in, the, in the agenda is something very quick that I would like to point out. I, I've seen that you have, have made a custom, some of you have made a custom of, of joining other working group uh, meetings, uh, namely GUI and, and browsers. And I know that, that uh, Adin has also joins uh, some Go-related uh, uh, working groups. 
and I would like to encourage that. Uh, there's also some dependency on infrastructure, for instance, on, on my part, and there are also some co um, uh, some co work that we're going to start to do with the GUI and and web browsers uh, working groups. So I would encourage everyone to participate in these meetings if you have something that you'd like to ask from them or just just lurking and, and seeing what what they're uh, they're up to. Um, and and that's that's uh, that it's, it's not a job of only the, the captain of the working group to transmit the dependencies. I think we should this cross pollination since the 2019 uh, um, uh, milestones are um, there. There's a big milestone for the IPFS uh, 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 whole IPFS uh, group uh, that relates to uh, dynamic data and capabilities uh, working group. I think we. Uh, there is there is the need for for this cross um, uh, cross work uh, cross pollination um, just just uh, and yeah well, I think we have demos scheduled uh, you want to take the lead Jim okay I'll just do this one should be really quick um, okay yeah, can everybody see that yep I can see okay. So here's my code. So um, I've created a project called <laughs> uh, PeerBase XState Playground. Um, so um, there's only two files in it. And so my idea was to, instead of doing a web UI, just do a terminal-based UI and see if I can get the amount of code really reduced. So, um, so there's, a, there's a master controlling process and a child process. And what the master controlling process does is it starts up um, two separate child processes and they talk to each other. Um, it also starts a rendezvous process. So I'll give you the demo. So this is, it's, it's a keyboard driven and the keyboard is just a space bar and it drives it to the different states. So I'm starting in the initial state here. I hit space because you can see it says you move to the rendezvous started state. And you can see there's some logging and capturing. So what it did here was I hit spacebar. It used Node.js to start a subprocess, which just starts a rendezvous ser service. Um, and then if I move to the next state here, um, it st um, started a uh, on peer A. It created a subprocess, uh, which is running a um, a uh, peer peer base based app just this this um, file here is just a simple RGA uh, it's just a, like a mini version of PeerPad. Um, I've just created the collaboration haven't done anything yet so if I move to the next state I just hit spacebar again you can see peer B was state starting um, the UI on this could be a little bit easier to explain but. Um, so I, I've now have two subprocess running, and they're both connected to the same collaboration. So if I move to the next state in the in the simulation, uh, it just typed in three letters, and you can see this one um, is just listening to it. It just it synced, and then uh, the final state is a um, this this peer just typed three letters, and you can see they synchronized, and that's basically it. So um, this, this code, I want to get to these examples simpler, but this is sort of the controlling process. Um, and then this is the child process. And most of it's like boilerplate. Um, I'm using this um, library called xState, which is just sort of a, a way to declaratively describe a, a state machine in um, JSON. Um, maybe I'll throw up the web page. So, it's a, uh, let's see, yeah, they have a, I, I was attracted to it because they have a nice bunch of documentation and the author has been quite um, active going to conferences and promoting it and it's all written in TypeScript. So it seems pretty solid in terms of the, the 
the technology behind it. So um, it was good. I, I've, my initial impression of it was um, it works really well for just simple state machines. Um, it, the, the reason to use this one instead of just writing up your own state machine, uh, which would just be a few lines of JavaScript, is it has all this support for um, doing sort of hierarchical state machines. And uh, uh, but there's there's sort of like different ways to do it. So I was playing around with this ability to have like parallel states, state machines. They so have like a master state machine that you can embed for each worker or for each, um, yeah, <laughs> worker, I guess, uh, child. I created a separate state machine for each of them and then I sort of embedded them. But uh, there's, they also support other ways of doing it where you can sort of, um, uh, compose state machines together using sort of actor model and you're sending events between things. So because so I had to do things in the sub process, I sort of had to do a little bit of that anyway. So uh, the, 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 the way it's working in this particular um, sketch is a little bit more convoluted than how I would have preferred to do it. So it was my first time actually using the library. So I think I might try to do something similar in use the same library, but do it in a different way. So that's my, that's my main learning from it. But I, I, I like, I like it though. Like it's not a lot of code. Like it's, e it's easy to go in here and you can see states in like, there's a new state. I create pure base. I did a starting state. I call app start here. And then there's the started state. And then I create the collaboration. So um, there's a lot of boilerplate, but uh, the actual code is really, really simple. And then here's the part where I like put where it types. So there's not, you know, apart from all the boilerplate, there's not much code there. So um, I, that's that's it. I can take any questions. If... That's super oh, cool. Yeah. So go go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was wondering if it uh, this X date if it creates those diagrams for you or if they're just kind of like uh, demonstrative? Yeah, they have a, um, uh, let's see, where is it? Maybe it's on the GitHub page. I think it's on that page you were just on. Okay, they do have, um, you can, there's a visualizer. visualizer. So like here's one, you can click on them and it goes to the different states. <laughs> really small. <laughs> you can click red, and then you can add another state in here just interactively. And I'll make that blue. So it goes from red to blue. Update. So this is sort of nice. Um, so you could do sort of. Um, I think you want to keep your like individual state machines quite simple, but then you could do, sort of do the hierarchy. I don't know how the visualizer would work with the sort of actor model where there's different events going back and forth, but potentially I could um, create like in my little example app, create a little web server and then load this thing into it. And then you can sort of visually see the states. So that might be sort of interesting for some things. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm really interested in the state machines because we could uh, use it to sort of hook into the plumbing and uh, especially for things like connection management, um, like set up very specific um, simulations and, and not a lot of code, like two files and uh, like make sort of um, examples of, uh, you know, this this is how the, st the the connection management worked before this change, and then this is how it works after this change. Um, and we could even just you could make two separate workers that could use different versions of peer base or peer base or whatever we call it next. Uh, and uh, I don't know. It seems like it'd be pretty good. It would be pretty because the state machines they would very easily be like one step conversion over into a unit test as well. So you could. <laughs> That's what I, go, I was going to ask about about uh, the usage of, of of something like this. Since it's hierarchical, uh, I think it could um, 
easily be used to represent internal state of for 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 connections as as you proposed, um, mm -hmm. because the the state transitions or or the state management is hierarchical in that in that sense. Uh, yeah, there is there is um, I started sketching uh, a connection management state uh, diagram, which is very convoluted. Uh, I may try to represent it uh, using something like like this, and also for as as you are. For demos, that, that's a, the second one, and for, for tests, this is, mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, very interesting. So in terms of the, the typical finite state machines, for state machine libraries, this one, um, what's, the, what's the main difference between those, those, those typical ones that we use some, in some places on IPFS and, and this one? So I see that for one, this one is our hierarchical, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just um, I was attracted by the the documentation looked good and yeah it it's there's um I believe there's some books and things that I didn't read the book obviously but um, that this is based on so there's a, a bit of a background on a bit of a community built around so there's all there's a, an XML implementation I think that goes along with this book so this is sort of like uh, a follow-on implementation done in JavaScript. Um, so the, the the author here isn't in, in, isn't inventing this from scratch. So there's already a bit of a community around this. He's tried to make this compatible with this XML based one. Um, well, that said, that that me, tells me that this particular um, state machine implementation is a little bit on the heavy side. So uh, it's not that much Java. It, it's not that much TypeScript. But you know, in terms of like a state machine, can just be a few lines of JavaScript. So Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I think it's it's good for these types of little experiments I'm doing, um, where I'm not, we don't care about bundle size for for anything like that. Um, I'd be hesitant to build this into uh, our core libraries unless um, it gave us like some real benefits. I think also it's cool it's cool for for demos and and using that for. Uh, command line, like you, you, you play, hook that in into Diffy, right? Mm -hmm. um, that would be that that gives a good a good demo. Like you don't have to build a a, a UI. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Just... I could talk a bit about Diffy. Diffy is really cool. So Diffy is by Mathintosh. So it's a, it's a terrible name because it has nothing to do with diffs, this. other than the fact um, he's basically tried to make React for making terminal apps, and here's the web page for it. And uh, but it's really really simple to use it. So uh, let's see in, in the code here, it's basically React for the console. Except I can't even find where the the UI for is. Oh yeah, here it is. So so this is my this is my whole UI here. You know, it's it's basically just rendering that in a sort of declaratively, and uh, it's just like React. It'll only update the characters. It creates like a virtual DOM for your terminal. <laughs> so it's really nice because you just change your state and then the, the UI updates automatically. So it's, it's sort of genius for this sort of thing. So cool. Okay, um, that's probably, I should probably stop. Okay. Any questions for, for Jim? Or more questions? No? Cool. Um, there's anything. There's not anything else on on the uh, on the agenda. Is there anything? Any question besides questions? Is there anything you'd like to ask anyone about? Yeah, I will. Yeah, I would like to ask if if I should put the, um, the identity breakdown in the Google document because I, I think it will be better for us to contribute there and give feedback there instead of um, using a GIST. I guess you know people can't really edit easily the stuff there and so on. Yeah, I was going to propose that that offline, but uh, yeah, I think a Google Doc is is better because you cannot say which which yeah make the comments are are just just a, a list. Right. Can can you Pedro send me the list of emails of everyone on the working group so I can give permission, the edit permission? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, of course. And you can also yeah, Dirk. Sorry, I've, I've got a question, but go ahead. Uh, no, 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 Dirk, um, I was done. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, no, I was just wondering, Pedro, if you could um, talk a little bit about kind of like what the goals are for Q1 and uh, kind of where you see peer base or, <clears throat> or whatever it's going to be called going in the next quarter. Okay, so good question. Uh, so there's, there's the, this roadmap. I'm going to paste the, well, perhaps I'll share the screen even. That's a good question. Um, okay, so sharing. Can you guys see my desktop? Yeah. Cool. So there's IPFS slash roadmap uh, has the pull requests for the, the, the working groups. Okay. So this is like long term, uh, whole year, um, whole year, year roadmap. And you can click the preview. And, and there are, this is the proposal. So this is a, a, a pull request. Um, with the, the markdown document for uh, all the milestones for the uh, for this year and drilling down for this quarter, which was what what you were asking. Uh, so it's team management uh, pool slash uh, per request at 102, uh, which is also public. Um, I guess I can. There's a synchronous retrospective. And so there's the open planning thread. The open planning thread, uh, the temporary working doc was here. And now, um, then on this link, but now I have uh, translated this into uh, this. Um, um, bunch of changes. Uh, so I, I've incorporated um, the proposal for the Q1 OKRs into uh, this OKR slash DDC.MD uh, file on this pull request. So you can take a look at that and comment. Anyone can, can, can do that uh, or even uh, propose a pull request on, on this branch. Um, and so, so I, I can kind of drill down the, some, of, some of them. Um, so this is, uh, you're asking about peer base. So peer base attracted and welcoming to new, new developers uh, is, or peer base or whatever it's going to be um, called. Uh, it has to do with developer adoption of, uh, of peer base and be able to create dynamic apps, uh, web apps on, uh, on, top of, on top of it. So it entails having a website, having good doc documentation, uh, starting to build the, the, the specification uh, and all, all the things around the communication strategy. Also about education. So Jim uh, is going to, to lead that part, integrating that into the community working group of IPFS, uh, which is, was responsible for just launching um, a Proto School website, which now has a portal uh, based chapter and other chapters around, around the world. So I encourage you to, to check that. Uh, and also uh, have so user experience uh, guidelines. Uh, there's a, an effort going on on, on that. We, we, we already uh, started on the collaboration lifecycle thing. Um, identity solutions. So the IDM is going to be a big a big thing, uh, a big drive <laughs> on on this this first uh, quarter, led by. Uh, Andre uh, Cruz and, and and some people on, on the on Moxie team also uh, also uh, yeah reference re reference implementation uh, with, with for for the discussify uh, discussify uh, are going is going to be further improved and, and developed throughout this this quarter and also uh, to work with a partner. We already started working uh, with, with some companies that, that or some projects uh, that will require, that have some of the, share some of the common goals. And so to work with them and support each other uh, is a goal for this quarter also. Um, that's mostly uh, like in a quick gist, uh, the things that we have planned for, for this quarter. So one of the questions I was wondering about is, um, I know you guys are talking to a couple of different companies like Textile and so on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure like how much is public, but uh, 
Is, are you able to talk about any collaborations that might be happening there? Um, yeah, we, we started already started working with, yeah, it's totally public with textile. They're very public about their, their, their endeavors. Uh, and we we're, we're on the phase now. We're like, uh, starting to see what, what each other ha is doing on, on different areas and how we could perhaps, uh, be inspired by each other's works work. Um, also, uh, trying to know where we can help. Uh, in, in this particular case, textile, where we can help um, with their biggest pain points. But right now, to be frank, we're just on the phase of uh, understanding their, their current state, how well, their, their, their work and how they, uh, how they do things. So basically, there's, there's some parallels to what we've been doing so far, but they're further down the road on, on some other aspects, like identity, for instance, or uh, state replication, or um persistence for instance is one of them or key recovery uh, recovery uh, data recovery and and it's it's mostly gathering knowledge right now um and it's uh, there is there's this it's totally public and there is uh and we, we plan to make the, the work more more public on the near future and increasingly uh start cooperating with with them Furthermore, there's in, in terms of the textile, what they're doing, the textile uh, project and what they're doing, they're more on the mobile side and they use a Go, Go implementation of IPFS, uh, mobile Go implementation of IPFS. Well, it's IPFS compiled in, in mobile Go. Uh, but they, uh, and we do mostly JavaScript things, uh, but I think there, there's, a, a, in, in terms of, of spe specification, uh, and the effort that the bin is going to start start doing uh, right now uh, there's some things to 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 be learned from from them um, then want to add something to that yeah I mean I, at least my plan is um, to try and, and get like a rough idea of what we have and where our thinking is and then go out and start talking and be like okay so what are the things where you guys already have some of this and you have either things that, you know, you think worked the way you did it or didn't work the way you did it or would be willing to replace with something we built if we did build it. Um, so I think just first is taking an internal accounting and then, uh, and then going out and, and figuring out what's out there. There's a, a, a bunch of people to talk to um, and just sort of looking for more. The whole process is at this point is just exploration. So, yeah, anybody knows anybody, just you know, send them our way. Um, Arkady, I think, is also looking in, into the stuff um, as part of the collaborations working group. So yeah, at this point, just trying to learn more um, because, you know, like Textile has their cafes and stuff, and they do um, sort of their own take on how persistence works or messaging works when you're offline. And that's partially just because they needed to get something off the ground and figuring out what part of that is optimal versus what part of that is necessary um, is, is the other, uh, is the next thing to do. Speaking of which, Arkad, I don't know if you were listening. Uh, Dirk was asking about collaborations and what our plans were for this quarter. We were talking a bit about textile and Dean was, uh, was talking, I believe you, you, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, sorry, so I'm, uh, I'm trying to load up the peer pads that I had uh, made those notes in, uh, which hopefully will happen. Mm. Okay. I was having some trouble with dev.peerpads. Yeah, it, it seems to not be like even loading the page itself for me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Anyway, so uh, I guess the uh, the most uh, immediately relevant update uh, is that right before the holiday break, uh, we ended up having a call with the CryptPad people, or we rather with Ansys uh, from CryptPad, and uh, Pedro was on there, and I think that's the only. Uh, person uh, 
or uh, I, uh, I and Pedro were on it. Um, and <clears throat> unfortunately, the outcome of that was not super promising. Basically, there's still a lot of skepticism from their side that uh, our tech is uh, one ready to be used and two will uh, kind of be a net advantage for them. Uh, I'm trying to recover a pure pad that has all the notes from that, so I'll send that to the group. Uh, so I think the kind of the short takeaway is that one, we definitely need to improve performance and stability uh, significantly before that conversation can really happen in earnest. And two is that there's probably a conversation to be had about like features and things like that. So um, I think we basically need to cool that uh, initiative slightly, but it's still it's not off the table. It's just uh, kind of a little bit, a little bit tempered, but probably more like a Q2 uh, kind of thing. Uh, in, in terms of other collaborations, so textile, of course, is a big one. Uh, I don't know if any of you were on the uh, all uh, the IPFS call yesterday, but uh, Actix showed their um, industrial kind of automation stuff, which is super cool. Um, and um, I think there's a significant overlap between uh, their kind of main message passing, like group forming kind of logic and what, what we do uh, in peer base. Um, so uh, I think that's one that I'm excited to look into more. Um, uh, so yeah, I think, I think those are kind of the big, the big three. Cool, thank you. Um, do we know what's going on with the dev, dev peer pad? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's look after that. Probably not pinned, something like, like that. Um, any more questions to anyone? Yeah, I had um, a IPFS log versus a question, which I'm happy to, to take offline if, if we don't have time. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Go ahead. So my understanding of, of what happened when you guys were talking is you figured, okay, we have, we have these, these, there's these two solutions or things we're trying to do. One is uh, we have this event log and the other is we need this, this sort of causal graph of what's reliant on what. Uh, and you can build either one on top of the other one. Uh, and so the decision was IPFS logs already there. Let's just tweak IPFS log a little bit, and then we can build the DAG layer on top of it. Um, that that checks out, and even in the stuff that I'm I'm I've been working on with sort of synchronizing DAGs, I'm currently basically using a log because it was the easiest way to do it. Um, but I I feel like at least theoretically, it makes more sense to have the DAG layer be underneath instead of on top because the DAG is more flexible than the log um, and more performant. So I'm just, I'm wondering like how, how sort of that stuff went and, and what you guys think about that. All right, so, so I prefer log, uh, as far as I know, and, and, and by looking at the codes, um, it uses a DAG underneath. So essentially if you look at the entries JS file and the entry, entries IO file, that's where the, the DAG layer is on. So essentially, it's not using it's, it's not using a PLD, but it, it is a DAG in the sense that you store objects and then you have like a heads, not heads, sorry, a next, a pointer which is a CID or a multi hash because they they, they have uh, still multi hashes because they they are uh, older projects. Um, so they are not using IPLD, but uh, the pull request that I've make, made will be using IPLD and also will transform all the multi-hashes within the code to CIDs because the CIDs is the new spec um, of you know, content addressable IDs. So yeah, it's, it's currently using DAGs and then you have like um, a tiebreaker that I think it's currently in a pull request as well. Uh, so essentially they were simply last right wins a scenario, but uh, after the pull request lines, it will be customizable, uh, which means that the history will, will be kept, but the the last right scenario in case of concurrent, concurrent changes uh, will uh, ensure the, the full order of the, the log. So, um, 
my feeling about Tipe Fest Love in, in the sense of um, what or, uh, originally um, the discussion was, was about having um, the head start on, on the CRDT of Discussify and so on. And now that I've looked into the, into the codes, I have a feeling that IPFS log is more than what we actually need in terms of the bare bones, because they have this log uh, as a deck and also the tiebreaker, but they also have a replication strategy, not, not built in, but at least the strategy is there. And we don't need that in terms of the, the discussify use case that, that we, we know about. So, um, I, I have mixed feelings about all of this uh, after knowing more about the code. Perhaps we could, we could discuss that offline and, and, and think about that um, later. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about the, uh, I understood the dichotomy that you were saying and then about uh, having the, the log built on top of, of uh, a DAG or, or, or vice versa. I th well, well, I'm not sure I caught it, but I think I think it's that's that's right. So we have IPLD, and then we have a, a multi-writer log, a causal log. But it's not it's not a linear log. It's it's like a, it's a, a branch a branchy a causal branchy log, uh, potentially branchy. Um, yeah, so so, so the the get like uh, yeah. The, 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 the tag is actually underneath the IPFS log in their implementation. So mm -hmm. it's not really on top. So um, that's not really a problem. The problem uh, was, was, was what, what I was saying is that they have much more than, than a simple um, dagger-like structure where you can resolve into a, you know, a flattened list of events. They have all, the whole replication system around, um, around how multiple logs merge together um, is actually there, implemented there, uh, and, and in some scenarios you don't really need that. And we have, we, we have an overhead because of that in terms of storage and CPU and all of that that we wouldn't need uh, in case of Versidac, for instance. Um, but I'm happy to discuss that in another time. That's, that's mainly because we, on Discussify, we use the CRDT to, to, to point to the head. So, Correct. so uh, we, we kind of take care of, of that. And, and the, merge, the merges have to be explicit, right? The merges. Yeah, uh, th that's actually um, is actually offered by IPFS log, mm -hmm. not explicitly, but you can always append something that is yeah. acts as a merge. So it's not really a problem. It's just that you have to account for that explicit merge node when you are tra traversing the log, so that you can ignore those nodes whenever right. you are traversing. Um, in case of first dog, you have an explicit merge uh, if you want to. Um, but yeah, you're right. The CRDT already takes takes care of the, you know, adding entries, not not entries, but adding heads. So they solve that uh, using a different um, system that we currently don't need to have, but we must have because we don't have access to underlying entries. We must use the log, and the log instance is the one uh, responsible for for that to have like the heads and take care of the merging and, and all that stuff. Okay, but but we can. Uh, I then probably have have more more questions on that. We can take this uh, offline on RC or or an issue. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, no worries. No, I'm good. Uh, because we're, that was, was pretty helpful already. Cool. Because we're approaching approaching the well, we we surpassed the the end time of the meeting. Um, so, <laughs> Filecoin. Uh, cool. Um, I'm gonna get some swag my, for me next. Next. Uh, anyone else coming to Porto? Uh, well, besides the people that are already there. <laughs> no. Actually, that, that's something I wanted to ask. Um, so far, it, it seems like this uh, event is is somewhat closed. It's really not clear if it's just for elite peer to peer uh, people or well, what's going on there. Uh, it's uh, it's a little bit to be thing. I wasn't expecting to to come. David uh, asked me if I wanted to come since it's a gathering of people in Portugal, and I'm not too far away. Uh, but besides that, it's, it's not not really fundamental to 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 what at least what we're doing. I think 
uh, but I, I'll take the chance to to work a bit and and then to join to to join some conversation with some with some some people. Uh, okay. Otherwise, uh, or and then see and see some some people again. Uh, yeah. yeah. And the, All right. And the people in Porto, like like yourselves. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um, I wanted to talk in, uh, about something else. Um, I was not uh, aware that um, Jim is is uh, uh, leading the charge in in, in terms of of um, well, there are all sorts of names. Uh, it's, I'm not sure if it's community, but he's involved in Proto School. Is that correct? Um, I just sat in on the meeting, so just sort of like spying on them. But <laughs> okay, um, okay. But, uh, yeah, I, I might. Uh, I depending on how the Proto School school thing works out i might even try to do one in vancouver um, okay so. okay cool the, I, i'm mainly asking this but, uh, because we we need to i think at least these initial groups need to align and uh, and see how we can support each other because i suspect that a lot of the work uh like Uh, setting up the the content for some initial workshops and that's that sort of stuff uh, could and should probably be shared um, like let's say we we design like uh, 10 workshops or something like that uh, maybe we can split it between the the, the several chapters and each each chapter uh, designs um, some of them and and then shares with, with the rest so we should probably coordinate that uh, I don't know who who would be co coordinating that yeah it's, it's like michael rogers is in charge of the 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 community thing in proto school and they've put a a lot of work into it it's really quite impressive it's a whole application that they're, they're writing that will power all of this and uh, okay it's it's, it's, in, it's interesting it's gonna be interesting to see how it comes together w w when they launch it fully. okay Right. But in, in terms of the things that that uh, that we're going to be able to offer uh, from the dynamic data working group uh, to the community, uh, J Jim is is the the go-to guy to. Uh, I mean, uh, so, so there's the effort. I think we 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 have to join join. Uh, so we, both of you have to talk about 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 this mm -hmm. yeah, about about the, the community. Uh, since Jim has has uh, had uh, a lot of uh, experience in in. in creating uh, articles and, and, and blog posts and, and, and videos and demos mm -hmm. and workshops. Um, there is, it's, it's present on, on the OKRs, 2019 OKRs. His name is, is, is on, on, on the outbound, the articles and videos that we're going to produce on during this, okay. this, this quarter. Uh, so yeah, you, you guys talk to each other. We have, okay. I'm also interested yeah. in, in that, in that aspect, uh, uh, of course, but, um, Uh, I'd like to. There, there, there are some ideas already of just like brainstorming ideas for uh, subjects for articles and and, and workshops, but mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. But that's I think I, that's how the last state I saw that. Yeah, I, I think we'll do some of our own stuff that's standalone, mm -hmm. but then we'll also work with with what the the community teams working with doing because uh, they've done this all before. Like they have experience, like they know they have a template that they know will work, and they're rolling that out. So it, that's really exciting to be sort of involved with that. Nice, and and Jim, you have you have to uh, to sync with Marco also because is is developing the, the communication strategy for the peer peer base. Uh, yeah, definitely. Slash new name, uh, and and so that that's that's cross cross influential. Um, So you guys should talk. <laughs> uh, anything else? No. All right. So we're six minutes past time. Thank you for coming. Happy New Year, everyone. And so I'm going to change the schedule, and we'll see uh, each other next week. And I'll be in Porto. All right. Bye bye. Bye.